Okay, guys, this is that oil injection pump off of the 950700. I ended up putting it in the soda blaster, cleaned up pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch all of the hoses over. There's only a few. And let's see here. It's just a 5 sixteenths. And that was just the test hose, so that's not a big deal. Just gonna clean these off real quick. There are two sealing washers on these. One on the top and one on the bottom. I believe these are only five foot pounds. Let's just snug them up. Just like that. You'll be able to tell when they are tight. Acts like it doesn't want to turn, so. You don't want to break it and then have to back it off a turn. A quarter turn. <laughs> Heard that before. I'm gonna make sure those holes are clear. Oh, this one's already got one on there.
good to go. Go ahead and trim these up. I like the trim though. The rest of the piece off just to make it flush with the end there. Alright. And then you'll see. You see these lines here. So you got a boss line in the housing. You want to use this tab right here and either bend it up or down to position the idle tab. And that's the idle flow setting. And then when you install it, you want to make it to where the wide open throttle flow is right there. And you'll do that by adjusting the nuts on the injection oil lever cable that goes into here. Okay, so this is pretty much how you bleed. Um, you can bleed it either on the snowmobile or off the snowmobile. You have to have obviously a supply of oil here and I just have a line, 5 16 line and it's about two feet long. I got it filled about 18 inches with oil and then this is just an adapter that I made. Depending on the sled it should use a certain amount of cc's of oil and that'll tell you if it's pumping enough or if it's pumping too much and typically if it's not pumping enough it there these are actually check valves they're not just you know fancy looking little um, connectors to connect it to the pump itself these actually have a check valve in it and if the check valves get um, old and stiff they won't they'll need more pressure to open up and allow the oil because what they do is they allow oil in they allow the oil to go out of the pump but not back down so um, when they get old and stiff, they need more pressure to open up and they don't open up as wide and they just don't allow enough oil through. So that's why you'll typically get lower amounts of oil. And that usually I would say that that, was, that would only be if it was ran out of oil, if the sled was ran out of oil and then not filled back up right away and then let sit. So what you wanna do, uh, to bleed these, it's pretty simple. There is this bolt right here. I've already broke it loose. It is a 10 millimeter. And what you do is you just open that up and what will happen is it'll allow the oil to flow through the pump itself to make sure it's primed. That way you don't have any air bubbles in there. There you go. It's that simple. And like I said, you can do this on the snowmobile. You know, it's, it's a little tougher because it's more compact and hard to get back in there. So that's all the oil you want to do is just make sure it's got enough in there. You can even spin it a little bit, make sure it's um, gets all up in there. And another thing you can do too is spin the, hook it up to a drill and just get it pumping out of these tubes before you install it as well. Or you can take and pre-fill the tubes. There's a couple ways to do it. Back this up so you can see the tubes that I'm talking about. These are pretty small tubes. They have like an eighth inch inner diameter and that's so they can fit over 
the barb that is either on the intake flange of the snowmobile, usually for carbureted, or if it doesn't have these, then it'll have one single tube that comes out and goes into the fuel pump. So what you can do is you can actually take this whole tube off and then submerse it all the way in the uh, injection oil and then you know you just leave a little bit out of the top and then you can plug the hole and when you pull the whole thing out the oil is so thick that it'll just stay up in there and then you slip it on and lock it down with whatever ever method you use I like to use a couple of these smaller um, zip ties they seem to work pretty well and then uh, that way the tube is full you do that with both of them and they're ready to install so this is pretty good here I think I'm probably going to fill this other one the other method is let me see if I have it yes I do you got to have a syringe and the type of syringe that allows you to put this device on there and this is something that you you know you get through medical supplies you know an RN I'll have her bring one of these home for you and then you'll need to use this type of syringe and I believe this is like a 2cc and what happens is this screws right in there and then you can suck up the oil into this and they slip right inside there and then you just you gotta pump it full a few times and it'll eventually get to the point where it's up high enough and maybe good to go so those are the two methods that I've used uh, you can if you're doing rebuilding an engine what will happen is you'll want to pre-mix the first tank and then you at least perform the the priming method on the pump and then the tubes will get filled so that's uh, those are the two ways that I know of doing it if you guys know any other way um, you know go ahead and share comment what you know gotta keep the information flowing in the community if we don't you know people aren't gonna know what to do I just snug that 10 millimeter up usually about uh, six or seven pounds okay so I have this one ready to go I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys it's pretty simple and pretty effective It's been a while since I've done it, so what you want to do is just place this piece just barely on the inside and just have it on an angle and let it drain in. Alright, there's that one. Full. So it's kind of slow, just all depends on how you want to do it. I'm a pretty patient person, so I don't mind. Some people get in too much of a hurry. I don't want to cut corners, that's for sure. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys here. So all I did was put a flathead bit in the side of my drill bit. Or I'm sorry, my drill gun. And... Uh, you just slide a piece of fuel line over it and then that will fit into this portion of the gun oh, I'm sorry to the portion of the pump here and then you want to spin it backwards counterclockwise 
and you'll be able to see it pump oil from here. Let me get a rag to put down so I'll... let me open this. <clears throat> so if you open the valve all the way, it'll allow the most flow. So that's how that does that. I don't want to get too much oil everywhere. Let me find something to wrap around. This right here. So there we go. Now the pump and the lines are both primed perfectly. So now we'll clean this up and go put it on the sled. Once again, using Permatex, the right stuff, one minute black, ultra black, gasket maker. Can return to service on one minute. Stuff's awesome. Okay, just gonna put a hair of red Loctite on here. Nothing crazy. Make sure that you're locating lines for both the drive shaft and the coupler on the pump lineup. For some reason, the cat used Phillips head screws 
on quite a few things that shouldn't they shouldn't have. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. I guess I can understand why they used a Phillips stone here, but they could have used a socket head. Which is a bolt that you fit an Allen key into, which is really a socket head. This is like the third... So you can't really fit a socket on this 10 millimeter bolt down here. But you don't really need to. Fish these in, this line up through here. That one's on nice. And this one goes around the back. screw out of this one. Okay. I like to go with these six inch zip ties. They are about a eighth of an inch wide. Alright guys, that's it for the video. 
I went ahead and decided to go ahead and send the crank out to get rebuilt with the noises that I was hearing in it. So um, I'm also gonna go ahead and get the pistons race coated. And so while all that's out at the shops, I'm gonna go ahead and powder coat the cases and the cylinders and the cylinder heads and a couple other things in this engine. And then once I get all the parts back, we're gonna go ahead and put it back together. So the next video is gonna go ahead and show the powder coating process. So if that's something you guys like, you guys like what you see on the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you guys are notified of future updates for this video series and more. And make sure you go ahead and comment if you guys have any questions. If you guys just want to say hello or you got any friendly advice I can use to go ahead and improve the processes here and, and uh, content I got on my channel, that would be great. Or if you just want to swing by and say hello like usual, you guys know I'm always down for the conversation. So, all right guys, we'll see you in the next video. So come on back. Take care and God bless.